gift ideas with uh, our doggy draft excluders. Um, I've got different lengths of mighty because I kind of thought drafts come through windows as well, so the smaller one could sit on a windowsill. The longer one you can make to any length you like. A doorway is normally about 36 inches, but maybe you've got French doors, that would be a very long dog. So, first thing I need to do is to cut out the rectangles for his body. I've got two pieces of fabric which will be the length of my doorway. Doorway is normally 36 inches, this one's just a little bit shorter. Just remember if you've got um, a fabric with a pattern on it like this dog, it's got to be the right way round. So on the other side, he's still standing the right way round. And I'm going to sew the two pieces face to face. I'm going to sew all the way around, leaving a gap across the bottom of around about four or five inches for turning. I'm keeping it square on the top two corners where the tail and the head are going to do, go and I'm going to just round off the bottom two corners. So just using a straight stitch really quickly so all the way around. So I'll back tack because I'm going to turn, there'll be a little bit of stress on the hole. Round at the bottom. keeping it square at the top and I've got around about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So again square at the top, I'll show you why later and round at the bottom. need to turn this inside out and stuff it. So I've uh, stitched all the way around, stuffed it full of wadding and make it quite nice and solid because you want it to be weighty and then I'm just going to hand sew the opening across the bottom before I put the legs on. So that's all finished and sewn up at the bottom so now I've got my sausage shape. I want to do the back legs next. So to make my leg shape, I'm going to use, um, mine's a bobbin, but it could be um, a cup or a small saucer. And I'm going to draw around the shape of the top of the leg. And then just come down from the top of that circle to the bottom of my paper. So that's like a knee, and then there's a foot. And I've got two pieces of fabric. I've got a contrasting fabric on the inside of the leg because I'm going to use that same fabric on the inside of the ears and I think it makes a nice little um, difference. So I'm going to stitch across the bottom, around the top, back to the bottom, leave a gap open here for turning of around about two inches, turn it inside out, then I'm left with this, which I then stuff. Again, my, my stuffing is just uh, the inside of pillows because I don't like to spend a lot of money on stuffing because you're never going to see it, but it's, it's really nice and soft. Um, so I'm going to pad this out, not, not too fat for this one. Um, and then I'm going to sew that onto the back end first. Right, so I've uh, sewn them both together, stuffed both of the feet, and I've put a button um, through the top to, so it looks as though they've, the leg's been sewn on with the button. Um, if you've got a very, very long needle, you could actually sew all the way through from one side to the other like that and attach them both together um, but I don't have a needle long enough so all I'm going to do, um, remember this is the, the back end, the rounded end is to sew behind here making sure that the foot sits on the floor because this is going to stop the, uh, the sausage dog from rolling around and I'm just going to put a few stitches behind here and uh, then I'm going to put a blob of glue there just to hold that in place and make it even more secure so I'm not off the thread first, hook it onto the back of my foot, put that in position again so his feet are just touching the floor and then I'm just going to go from the bottom to the top just a few times to secure that. So I've sewn the leg on quite roughly underneath there because I don't want to see the stitches and just to secure I'm going to pop some fabric glue all the way around the stitches so they just don't come undone 
and then a little bit underneath the leg as well. So you don't see it from the outside, but when that dries, that really will keep it secure. And obviously you probably do that when you've finished sewing the whole thing together. But I just thought I'd show you how I did it. Now then, the front legs. I've taken another piece of my two fabrics, so my lining fabric is the spotty one and the, the doggy one on the outside. And I've cut a, a rectangle around about six inches by three and just rounded off one end of those, that's going to be the paw. Stitched all the way around the edge apart from the opening and I'll turn that the right way around. And then I'm going to stuff it. Again, not, not too fat. I want it sturdy enough to be able to help the, um, the dog stand up. But I still want to keep it quite soft. Then when I get to the end, I'm going to fold in my two raw edges like that. I've just put one pin across there to keep it in place. And then I'm going to top stitch on my sewing machine just to hold that together. So back tack across the top first. If you've got fancy stitches, you could use embroidery stitches here because you'll see these. And snip off my excess threads to keep it nice and neat. And just like with the back legs, I'm going to sew a button just on the joint there. <clears throat> when I sew the button on, I'm going to keep it quite nice and tight so it gives um, a little bit of shape to his leg as well. So pull that tight. So I've got two strands of thread to make it stronger. finished sewing the button on, I'm going to take the same thread, because I've got enough of it, and attach the foot, the front foot, here, just so that it extends beyond the chest by a couple of inches, and again it sits on the floor. So if I just turn this over, this is the, the fiddly bit, because you need to try and keep this as tight as you can, but I'm going to put that blob of glue on the back again just to secure it. So if your stitches aren't too tight then the glue will certainly hold that in place. Then I'll do the same with the second paw on the other side. Now I've uh, I popped a bit of glue behind those front paws and I've just put a couple of pins in to keep those in place while it's drying because now it's time to do the head. Uh, this is a Scotty dog and well as you can see from the fabric the heads are quite square so I've got a rectangle of fabric. I'll just measure that for you. It's um, seven inches by five inches. That's my rectangle. And it's going to sit on top of the, the body uh, about there. I know it looks a little bit big, but when you've got the seam allowance taken off, it will obviously be smaller. Now, he's not a perfect square. Um, so I'm going to leave the back of his head quite square. I'm going to leave his nose quite square but I'm going to just round off his chin a little bit. So just take the corner away. And then I'm going to sew together, but my gap for turning is going to be from the back of the neck here to around about halfway down the chin, because that's where it's going to be stitched to the body. So I'll need to turn those two face to face and just sew around the edge.
to make sure I've cut all of those seams and then I can snip off my excess fabric. Not too close to the seam but keeps it a bit neater. And then turn it the other way around. Then I'll stuff it. This can be quite compact as well because I want him to have a nice round face. Surprising how much stuffing it actually takes when you squash it in there. Now where my opening is, I'm going to fold in the edge, but I'm not going to sew the two sides together this time. <clears throat> because this is going to sit on the point of my body, like so. And because I've left the opening round, it makes a nice fat neck, and that means it, the head's not going to wobble from side to side. So this may be a little bit fiddly, and you may want to pin this beforehand, but I'm literally just going to over sew. It doesn't matter how neat the stitches are here because it's going to have a collar, collar on or a ribbon. So I'm just going to stitch this in place and then I'll put a little bit of glue over the stitches again to make sure they don't come undone. So that goes in the back of the neck and I'll line that up with... This is why I've left the corner here, you see, so you've got something to actually push into the head. I'll line that up with a seam on the back so that's nice and neat and secure just a couple of times. And then keeping that corner tucked inside his head, just go into the bottom, out of the top, all the way around. Keep the stitches as tight together as you can, but they don't have to be perfect because you just won't see these. You just need to make sure that head isn't going to come off. So now it's starting to take the shape of the dog. I've sewn on just roughly all the way around the neck. I'm going to do his ears next. And I've cut out two uh, right angle triangles, like that. Make sure that you cut both sets facing inwards. So, in other words, the lining of my fabric is on the inside of the ear, not one on the inside and one on the outside. Um, my triangles measure around about three inches by two. I'm going to stitch around the top and the bottom, leave the bottom open, sorry, the top and the side, leave the bottom open, turn it inside out, and then just like I did with the front paws, I've tucked under the raw edge and just stitched that across with my machine. Then I'm going to hand sew these on. Now I know you could, if you wanted to, put these on beforehand and machine sew them to the, the dog's head, but I just want to make sure that I can, I can get them in the perfect position and I find that easier to do after. So actually I'm going to pin those just in place near the back of his head with a straight side straight up the back and just like with the legs I'm going to hand sew because I think that makes it nice and secure and then I'm just going to make sure they're both the same either side of the head and then I'm going to pop a bit of glue just behind them just to hold them in place. So the ears are in place, I've hand sewn across the bottom, just put a little bit of glue behind there so the pins are to, uh, to hold that while the glue dries. Then I'm going to put the eyes on and have a play with the eyes before you decide where you're going to put them. Because if you put them too high up, it looks a little bit mean. If you put them too low down, it looks odd. But if you put them kind of in the centre of his head, it's, it looks a little bit more friendly. So that's where mine are going to go. And this time I'm going to stitch all the way through the head because it's not as wide as the body. I have got quite a long needle this time. And I think if you sew the two buttons together, it gives his head a little bit of shape. So that goes on one side and I'm just going to push the needle all the way through to the other side. Keeping it in the same place on, on the other side so his eyes aren't all over the place. And you see when you pull that tighter, it's got a little bit of shape. So straight through to this side. Again, just make sure that he is oops, symmetrical. And then straight back through 
to that side. And pull quite tight. I've got a double layer of thread again. If it breaks, then uh, just start all over again. It's not the end of the world. And just keep going backwards and forwards until those eyes are nice and secure. A bit fiddly, but it's worth it, I think. That's it. The more times you go through, the more sturdy it's going to be. If you haven't got a really long needle, you could actually sew through the button. Or put the thread through the button before you sew it on. Um, and even glue those buttons on, as long as obviously you don't have um, children in the house that could pull them off. That'll do it. So just to finish off, I'm going to get underneath the button, wrap it around a few times to secure it. And I've just come out there once because I want to hide the end of the thread. Um, and again, I'm going to put a blob of glue behind them just to keep them in place. So those are the eyes. Then I'm going to give him a nose. And I've got a piece of red yarn. And I'm just going to go over and over and over the end of the point where his nose is. So took in the end of my yarn like so. And keeping the stitches nice and tight together and compact. Go for that as many times as you need to. Oops. That'll do for that one. I'd normally thread the rest of my thread through the in fact I should do that, shouldn't I? Just that my needle came undone. So thread back underneath here, out the other side. And then, guess what? That old faithful blob of glue to keep it in place. The final bit is the tail, and I'm going to fix that just like the head. So I've cut um, the right-angled triangle of fabric, turned, like, like I did with the ears, turned it inside out, fold under the edge bits, and then this is why his bottom end has a corner to it, because I'm going to push that over the top and then just stitch around. If your stitching isn't oops, very uh, even, then you could always tie another bow around his tail. So I'll just stitch this on quickly. So he's just about finished, tail sewn on. I've still got the pins in there because my glue is still drying. Um, but the last thing I need to do is to disguise those stitches around the neck simply by tying a little bow and a nice contrasting fabric. And a little blob of glue to keep that in place. I'll just cut that a bit shorter. One thing to mention, obviously this is a Scotty dog and it lended itself to Scotty dog fabric, but if you don't want to do a Scotty dog, if that was his head and I cut off um, a little bit on the nose to make it rounder, if I cut off a little bit more on the nose and make it very round and then cut off a little bit more and make a chin, And then instead of doing a pointy ear, I cut out an elongated oval ear. Now you've got a spaniel. And using the same shape of ear, if you then made his nose very pointy, oh, funny shape, got a beak. But then he starts to look a little bit more like a dash hound. So have a play with the fabrics. Draw on a piece of paper first and see how many different dogs or even cats you can come up with. <laughs>